Hey there, Floss Tube. It's Kathy with Hands On Design coming at you with another update. It's been a while since um, my last video. Quite frankly, I almost stopped doing them because I was I was really getting frustrated with my my um, camera setup and everything. I have a tripod, and um, but I didn't have a. I use it for when I shoot the covers of my charts and everything, and. Um, but <laughs> I was holding my cell phone because I don't use my cell phone for, to shoot the covers. But I was holding my cell phone in place. Well, you can see the doggy tail in there. Um, hopefully the doorbell doesn't ring like it did during the last take. Um, but I hold my phone in place with sticky tack, which has worked till now. Um, except the last time I was shooting a video, I found myself going like, as my phone sort of slid off the side. So I went out and I invested a whopping $10 in a little phone holder to attach to the tripod. So we'll give it another shot. But um, anyway, this is at least, I don't know, I'm out of practice with this. I wanna say this is like my fourth or fifth take and I don't even have my son here. So um, anyway, August, busy month. September's almost over. In fact, tomorrow, yay, is the first day of fall. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about August. Billy, who you met in the last video, uh, went back to work at his uh, regular school year job. And, and then my son, my youngest son, Christopher, um, graduated from college last spring and we moved him to the Des Moines area in um, early August. So he's employed, yay, and um, he's loving life and kind of, you know, figuring out how this whole adulting thing works. So uh, very proud, his dad and I are very proud and excited for him and, and what he's got going on. So once we got back from moving him in, I had to quickly get ready to get down to uh, St. Charles, Missouri, where uh, Needlework Galleria took place. Uh, before I went there, I actually took a quick little less than 24 hour side trip to Troy, Illinois, which uh, if that sounds familiar to you, it's the home offices of Just Another Button Company, where I worked with uh, Cecile and Rachel and got to play Auntie Kathy to um, two little lovely girls. And uh, so we worked on some projects and then I took off to go set up for Galleria. Um, I taught a class, I taught around Robin. We were open for uh, vended, we were open for sales. Um, met up with a lot of fun stitchers. I met, okay, shout out to um, uh, D Squared. I met the other floss tube. Um, I met them, they're, they're just, hilarious ladies uh, had got to have dinner with them one night some pizza and if you saw my Facebook feed at all there was a, a fun selfie picture where I practically fell over the balcony um, with them and uh, my friend Karen from so much to love and Beth from summer house stitch works and um, oh and my friends um, well Lorraine uh, who came I believe with um, D squared who also has a floss tube now and um, Oh, and then Tracy and, and Judy, um, two very dear friends from the Oklahoma area. So uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, mini reunions, I don't know. I was gonna say slumber party, but nobody slept. <laughs> so uh, I taught a, a fun little class. Um, my class was a half day and then I did this, we kind of coordinated with each other, Beth from Summer House Stitch Works. She did a little strawberry called the Winterberry and then I did um, the Winter Woods. And um, the saying is, the winter woods are filled with snow. I sit and stitch by the fire's glow. They had pre-stitching for each class. And then I would say quite a few people actually, um, if they did their pre-stitching, they left with uh, the finished piece, which is always kind of a fun thing to do when you take a class. Um, so anyway, and Beth and I are actually teaching this class again, November 6th in the Lancaster, um, Pennsylvania area at um, the shop is Stitches Unlimited. So um, if you're in that area and are interested in taking the class, call Pat at Stitches Unlimited because she'll be sending pre-stitch out soon, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, so that'll be fun. Um, so once I got back from um, visiting with friends and, and having fun, oh, and working really hard um, at, at Needlework Galleria. And by the way, shout out also to Kathy Roganella of Inspired Needle and all of her, um, you know, the, the gals that work at her shop, the gals that volunteer, or I like call it voluntold. Um, they just, they did a marvelous job. Uh, they make it run smoothly. 
uh, the event itself, I think Kathy's been doing this for about three years now, and the event just grows every year. Um, lots of fun. Lots of designers, a couple shops come, classes, the round robins, um, and just stitching. Stitching and the fellowship of stitching, which I think is awesome. So, um, but anyway, I came back from that and had to quickly work on getting our two um, September releases out, Pumpkin Spice Farm, and then of course, um, the autumn version of uh, the Chalk for the Home series, the piece that I do with um, Priscilla and Chelsea. And, and in case you know nothing about floss tube whatsoever, of course, now they've got um, just a series of just fun videos, the, the two of them. Uh, Priscilla and I have, I guess, worked together now for a couple years, but we've never actually met face to face. But I, I, I messaged her after I watched one of the videos and I said, you know, now I feel like I actually do know you. And okay, this is my influence from them. When I saw their videos and I saw their bracelets, I said, we have Pandora in common. I just forget to wear mine because, well, quite frankly, um, <clears throat> I work from home. And on days when I don't have to start off the morning by going anywhere, um, I might wear my pajamas <laughs> down to the studio for a little bit before lunch and then go grab a shower and then go back to work. And, you know, sometimes Pandora and don't, Pandora doesn't go with PJs, you know, what can I say? So anyway, but I got them all switched off with my fall colors and my fall charms and I'm good to go. So thanks Priscilla and Chelsea. Um, but anyway, so Pumpkin Spice Farm was one of the releases that I did. And here's, here's the one from the cover. And, and I want to tell you a quick little side note. When I say it, it almost didn't happen, it really almost didn't happen. Um, this was originally a different design, different fabric. I used Romy's Creations thread. She's one of the Italian designers and she dyes some, a line of hand dyed threads. And that's what I did use in this. So I was originally using a hand dyed linen and the hand dyed threads. And um, okay, I'm just going to show you. I'm just, I'm just going to show you. This was the original design. <laughs> okay, see that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, in my head it was much cuter. Um, so I, I set this up. Oh, yeah, nope, that was it. I thought I was showing you the back. Hard to see, hard to, ugh, I don't know. Just, it didn't come out right. You know, every once in a while, you goof. So I was a little frustrated by it because we were, we were getting, you know, ready to send my son off. We were getting ready. We we're getting ready, getting, there were so many things going on this summer. And um, uh, I just, I had kind of a, a weird July too. I sort of I had some health issues, everything's good, I'm fine, whatever. But you know, it just kind of derailed me for about three weeks. And I just, it was like, I just, I couldn't get anything done. And um, I, when that one came back from the stitcher, she did a fabulous job stitching it. It was my design <laughs> that I didn't like. It was like, ugh. Yeah, I just don't like that. Um, so my husband said, you know, Kathy, sometimes things, these things happen, you know, not everything's gonna, you know, not everything's gonna work out. So I had kind of, you know, decided to have a, a grown up moment and go, okay, he's right. You know, it's just, it, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So one Sunday afternoon, I went downstairs to the computer and I was, you know, I hadn't quite come to that conclusion yet. And I just looked and I'm like, I just, I can't, you know, I just, I can't do it. I, I can't think of how to change it to make it better, to make it what I like. And um, I came upstairs and he's sitting on the couch and probably watching TV, something sports on TV. And I just, I looked at him and I said, pumpkin spice is dead. <laughs> just like that. And he's like, okay. Um, so I kind of, I just went on with the evening. You know, we had dinner, whatever, watched TV, stitched. So I woke up about four in the morning. I don't know why. Four in the morning is like my magic hour, four. Not three, not two, not five. Why not eight? Um, but four in the morning. And it's kind of like my brain goes, Ch -ch -ch. welcome to your day. Um, so I had some thoughts and I had some little, Ch -ch -ch. what if I did this and what if I did that? Ooh, and, oh, yeah, you know. Where do these things come from? I have no idea. Um, I'm just glad they do. But uh, so I went after he went to the office and I went downstairs to work. And Mondays are typically the day, like I like to, 
that's kind of what I call, I get all the office work done, you know, shipments and the books and all that kind of stuff, you know, get that stuff out of the way early in the week. Um, so by the time, I guess it probably got to about 3.30 and I wanted to be done, time to come upstairs and um, once he, my husband comes home and tell her, okay, I, took, I got my sketchbook out, I got all my original Pumpkin Spice Farm notes and I pulled up the old files in the computer and I said, if I can't make this work in the next two hours until he gets home, then it really is done. I slipped on my headphones. I, I, I usually wear headphones when I design because I like to tune everything else out. Don't ask me even what I listen to. Um, uh, but uh, he came home and I didn't hear him come home and I didn't even hear the text because he usually texts and says, you know, head it out kind of thing. And he stood behind me and by, I, by that time I saw he was there and I slipped my headphones off and he goes, I knew Pumpkin Spice Farm wasn't dead. <laughs> So I said, well, what do you think? He goes, oh, I like that a lot. And I said, I do too. So um, I, I changed a few of the, the colors from the original, but most everything I, I kept the same, the Romy's threads. And then I obviously changed the linen and the design. <laughs> Dog. Okay, I'm back. Um, the world is now safe from whatever was approaching my door. I don't know what it was, but honestly, I think it was the wind. And, and she's... Uh, that's why I can work in my headphones because if somebody does come to the door, I know she's going to bark. <laughs> so anyway, sorry about the interruption. But anyway, so where was I? So Pumpkin Spice Farm. Um, I just, I knew I wanted a sweet little pillow. And um, at that time, Lois, I worked with Lois um, on the My Stitcher's Heart. Uh, she owns Elegant Stitch, but she also is hand dyeing. Um, trims and rickrack and now velveteen and she was sending me the velveteen because she knows I like to finish doing different things and she thought I might like to use them which of course I do um, and this is blue corn velveteen and oh, it's just the colors of her velveteen are just are such saturated tones which is right up my alley I love that um, and then I put these three buttons on the back because of the way I finish because I I do my finishing a little differently for pillows especially these little guys um, where I so I don't have that weird hard to close side seam um, I'll explain that in another video maybe like a tutorial or something but anyway so I you know I sewed everything shut and then to kind of hide that scar in the back I put the three buttons on very quickly because I wanted to take this to Galleria with me to show, even though the chart wasn't available yet. Uh, so I thought, you know, it would be kind of fun, like three little pumpkins, like I'm going to add like a little ribbon here. So I got like three little pumpkins on the back. So use the Velveteen hand dyed buttons from Just Another Button Company. And then I used Lois's chenille. I do hand, can you see? I do hand stitch the chenille on. Um, I like her chenille because it's nice and thick. What I don't always like is when you do whip stitch chenille on, it kind of makes a divot in the chenille. Um, so what I actually did is I took her chenille and I, I twisted it like you would a twisted cord. Um, sink one, one ply. So, you know, t somebody held one end and I made a little loop on the other end and I, I twisted it. So it twisted back on itself and I did it very tight because I didn't want a ton of extra volume, but what I wanted to be able to do is when I hand stitched, whip stitched that on, that my needle would be able to go inside the twisted cord and grab like the core without having the thread go over top of the cord and creating that weird little divot. Which on sometimes it looks really good that way, but then I'm kind of OCD enough where all the divots have to be like equally, you know, spaced. And I wasn't going to do that. So anyway, it's a fun little pillow, Pumpkin Spice Farm. Um, I did use Romy's threads. Um, the fun part about this was is that I had shops pre-order the thread packs. And then Romy was one of the vendors at Needlework Galleria. So I picked up, I pre-ordered all the, the thread packs and she brought them to me. And she brought me a big bag of all these thread packs, which was kind of fun. So the shops didn't have to do the shipping to Italy kind of thing. And I got to use some fun threads. I do also give um, other hand dyed um, conversions, I think they're all gentle art, and they're all very, very close. I will say this: if you don't want to go the, the uh, Romy's route, um, you know, if, if you've if you've got if you've got them, try them. Um, they're lovely colors. Um, but I have given you hand dyed alternatives, 
and also DMC alternatives. So uh, just a fun little, and um, stay tuned at the end because I have one left, one thread pack left. So stay tuned. Anyway, so um, that's Pumpkin Spice Farm. So the other new release for September, I keep getting really close to the camera, um, was of course, and I have to back up for this, was my, uh, was my collaboration with Priscilla, um, the Sunflower Manor for Chalk for the Home. And um, ugh, each one just, you know, I don't ever know what she's gonna draw. I, when I open up the email, I, I see an email from her with an attachment and I go, Ooh, yay, I wonder what she did this time. Um, somebody did ask me how come I don't f finish mine the same way as Priscilla does. Because like I said, um, you know, the uh, if, if you know nothing about floss too, <laughs> um, then you shouldn't at least know who the real housewives of cross stitch are. That's Priscilla and Chelsea. But Priscilla showed, she's got this fun frame where it's got, um, the, uh, this in the bottom and then and then that in the top and then um, I really like what I think it's Chelsea's husband did something with the frame to change it out um, to make it a little more Priscilla e looking um, and uh, but anyway I actually use the whole the same frame tulip house rose man or rose cottage all in the same frame I just I literally even just um, laced this yesterday and popped it in um, and you're thinking yesterday yeah by the trick of modern photography, the one in the cover of the chart is actually not laced, but very strategically placed. <laughs> oh, the things we do. Um, but anyway, part of the reason why um, we I do mine separately or differently um, is that um, one of the nice things about, I send Pris Priscilla the chart for this obviously ahead of time because I want her to approve it, um, but she's stitching it. She does um, prefers to stitch on the even weave that she does. So to me, I think it's kind of a bonus. You get to see what it looks like on linen and you get to see what it looks like on the darker even weave. Um, my finishes actually have to work for a living. Um, I do trunk shows. Um, I don't put them together because that would be a monster to ship to a trunk show. Plus this way, it gives me two separate pieces. One can, if I have two shows going on at the same time, one can go here, one can go there. And it, it just works out that way. So that's partly why I do it. Um, and so, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, before I talk to you about that one thread pack I have left, um, I do, I'm already working ahead on um, the, some designs coming out in, in October. I just kind of have a a couple little new a couple little ones and then of course we'll have one more but by, by the end of this year we'll have the, the last um, chalk for the home um, I don't know what Priscilla will come up with but I'm sure it'll be fantastic um, so this is the time of year you probably don't see designers out there maybe necessarily posting a lot of new things because we're kind of winding down for the year Plus we're also, at least I know I am, gearing up to what's coming out, the 2018 collections. Um, you know, we have Market in March, and so there's just, there's always, there's never a downtime. <laughs> there really isn't. Um, I'm looking forward to, I'm teaching in the uh, beginning of November, I'll be in Cape May, um, teaching a class there. In fact, this afternoon I'm, I'm photographing the, the finishing instructions. Um, and then I, two days after I'm in Cape May, I'll be going to Lancaster, Pennsylvania and teaching there. That's what we're doing, doing that with Beth from Summer House Stitch Works. She's from that area. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think what else I have coming up. I have, of course, there'll be Needlework Market in, um, in, in March. I believe I will be in Illinois in April at Kathy Roganella's shop at, a, um, at Inspired Needle. Um, I have something big kind of coming up in May, but I can't really talk about it just yet. And then I'm really excited to say that um, I will be teaching down at um, in Lindy's, the, the Silver Needles, um, they're in their big July retreat. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm already working away on the project for that and what I get to teach down there. So uh, looking forward to seeing some people that I haven't seen for a number of years at a few retreats and it should be a lot of fun. So. Um, like I said, there really is 
never any downtime and I'm very fortunate that I have a job that I love. So um, I am gonna show you one little sneak peek of a design. I've got two smalls coming out in, um, in October and I don't know exactly when um, just cause I'm kind of um, working on a few projects right now that have other deadlines. So one, um, this is a cute little piece, sunshine on a stem, fun little pillow. This is actually, this is not, I know I've done other pillows where they're stitching down here and this is linen. That's actually um, fabric. So more details. There's the extra fun little embellishment. It's um, wool felt. Those are not charted. The leaves are not charted. Um, I did this piece last year and um, Karen, so much to love, does a bag of the month club. You get a bag plus you get other fun little goodies and you know, little bits and bobs and she usually has a designer include a pattern. So um, she asked me last year if I would do something sunflowery and I've had a lot of requests for this one um, that if I would release it. So that's coming up here probably in a couple of weeks in, um, in October, so look for that. But, um, Okay, so before I sign off, if you would, how do I wanna do this? If you would say, all I need is a comment. Okay, number one, I would like you to be a follower um, and maybe go check out either my Instagram pages or my Facebook pages. Um, there is a hands-on design Facebook group as well, hands-on design stitchers. Um, and I've got this thread pack leave a comment and all I want you to say is you know nothing like you know I want to be entered or whatever because I guess I did learn also from Priscilla and Chelsea that you're not supposed to say certain words but just tell me um, pumpkin spice latte or what's your favorite pumpkin spice like pumpkin spice cookies pumpkin spice latte pumpkin spice pumpkin spice just pumpkin spice so what's your favorite pumpkin spice? There's really no wrong answer. Just make a comment. And um, I will announce, probably maybe on my social media pages or in the next video, obviously, um, the big wiener. Anyway, so in the meantime, um, I hope you have a pumpkin spice kind of day. I'm going to. I think I finally got through one of these videos and I didn't have to go like this in the process. So um, until we talk next time, enjoy the stitch. Have a good day. Bye.